Welcome to the Templeton Library. I'm Ms. Bombino and I'm giving you a guided tour of the library and the space where you will be working if you are a library monitor. So you've signed up to be the library club member. What you need to know is that when you first come in, you will come to the desk and you will sign in to the sign-in book. This is to ensure that you will get your service hours. So the, if you do not sign in, I will not know how long you've uh, actually worked each time you come in. And the second thing you will do is you'll either put your backpack or your books underneath the counter here or somewhere out of the way where no one is going to trip on them. So there usually is a fan here because it gets a little stuffy. So there's a space right cubby hole behind as well as some areas here by the filing cabinet on the floor. But please do not leave your backpack in the middle of the floor where people will trip. So once you've signed in and put your backpack away, you're going to refer to the schedule that's posted on your library bulletin board here. And you'll notice that the names of the students who are helping have been put on a schedule from Monday to Friday. So your job will be to figure out what number is located next to your name. So if we're looking at Tuesday here, the number one job is for Andrea. And Andrea will be working at working the circulation desk. The number next to your name will need to be explained in full on this sign-in book. So the number one job for this circulation desk is outlined there. You can read it when you have a bit of time. As is number two, if you're a number two job, you're going to be working at shelving books off of the book cart. So when we get books returned, the person who works the desk will put the, uh, the materials on this cart in order, either by number or by alphabetical order, and then it's your job to shelve. So that's a number two position. If you have a number three next to your name, you're responsible for shelf reading. So on this wall, just above where the book cart is, you're going to locate the individual sheets. There's one for paperback fiction, one for easy and graphic, the orange one is for the non-fiction books that are numbered 0 to 900. And then there's a fifth uh, section which happens to be for reference books. So what you have here is the shelf reading chart. And if you look at the actual paper, you'll notice that there's a name of a person next to a date. And uh, in this case, it's the fiction, so there's an alphabetical name. The letters indicate where the person left off. So if you're on shelf reading fiction paperback, you would actually pick up from this spot here and carry on to do make sure the books on the shelves are in order. There's another little video segment later on that will show you exactly what that means to shelf read. But just so you know that's where you start off. So number three is for shelf reading fiction and nonfiction for number four job. So when you're working the desk, the materials that you have here at the circulation desk are for your use only. Please do not loan out pencils or scissors or anything from this section because this is material that you're going to need. But what you have here at the circulation desk, just so you have an idea of the vocabulary, this here is the circ computer or circulation machine. It has the horizon program for checking in and checking out books. And you'll notice that I have a sheet of paper posted with the instructions on how to do both of those things. But again, there'll be a video clip later on that will explain in fully. There is a scanner. You never remove the scanner from its cradle. You should be able to scan the books just by putting the book underneath. But if you have problems, feel free to move the actual entire sh scanner either towards you or further away. There is a receipt printer. Actually, this prints off the date due slips to remind people when to return things. And then the last piece of machinery is called the sensitizer. This is where we sensitize books when they get checked in and desensitize books when they go out. Notice that there is a sign posted that you do not pass any DVDs or videos through this machine because that will erase the soundtrack. At the desk you will also find a coin box. The coin box is for making change for print jobs. People will use the printer, come up to the counter and pay for their jobs. It costs 10 cents per page for text printing and if anyone prints photos or pictures or maps, it will cost 25 cents. So in these little pillbox containers, you have the change that you can make change for people. If you do not have enough change, just ask Ms. Bombino. Now we tuck the, the little box far, far in the back so that it doesn't become a distraction and it doesn't disappear on us. Next to the coin box are the staff cards. 
Teachers will also be borrowing materials from time to time. So the cards are actually arranged in alphabetical order by the person's last name. If you do not recognize the teacher or do not know who the teacher is, please ask them their name and look up their card. And you'll have a little box here. I'm unfortunately filming on my own, but once you open them up, there's a little tab for each of the alphabets to help you. And there are felt pens for you to use, elastics, at the desk you will also find the reserve shelf. Now the books on the reserve shelf are books that I put on the shelf. You do not put books on the reserve shelf. The only place you would put them is if the computer at check-in time indicates that the book is on reserve, you will put books on or in, pardon me, the reserve box. And then it's my job, the teacher librarian's job, to pick out the books, notify the student that the books arrived, and then once I have notified the student, I will put the book in alphabetical order by their last name, the student's last name, here. So you might have a book on reserve for yourself, or a, or a student of your friend of yours will come up and ask and say, I have my book on reserve. And then a down on the very, very bottom shelf is the shelf for damaged books. And we will explain this fully later on. Also at the circulation desk are the DVDs. DVDs are not kept on the shelves outside on the regular shelves. They are kept behind the counter. These are fake cases with the original DVDs and the cases are actually on the shelf. So if a teacher comes with a DVD from the shelf, the case will be empty and it's up to you to locate the DVD. These are in order by numerical order. You just locate the DVD and then do a trade-off on them. And we'll explain that at a later stage as well. At the desk are also the mice. The mice are not connected to the computers in the lab. You may be asked to bring a tray of mice into the lab for teacher's use. For use of computers in the library, there are 10 stations and the student should be able to use one of those machines. But should those machines be all occupied, feel free to hand out one of these mice. Just remember to take a go card or identification so we know who has borrowed it. And then at the desk, you'll also have a little caddy that holds rainy day bags. If you notice that it's raining and checking out a book, please suggest to the person who's borrowing the book that they take a plastic bag. And then coming full circle, well, there is a little ca uh, caddy just on top of the filing cabinet. If you were to actually have nothing else to do, you could look in here and see if there are extra jobs. At the moment, the plants need watering. And if you look underneath, there's a folder that has some indication of cutting out some letters. But these are also extra jobs if you're working the circ desk. So that happens to be your circ desk tour, just as a reminder. And we will carry on with segment two with something else.